We promised you three transfer windows. You're bloody getting them. Hello, gorgeous friends of planet Earth. Something happened this week. Something pretty monumental. Did the podcast, The Ripple Effect. It was with Sam Peoples. It was glorious. We were talking about the Man United ownership. And he said this. We need a number nine. We need another central midfielder. And you could argue we need a goalkeeper. So we talk about so much in that podcast. It's absolutely fantastic. He knows everything about the Man United ownership. And we talk about how fans will feel about it. So if you want to check out the whole thing, there's a link in the description. But more importantly, it got me thinking of a video that we can do here on YouTube. What will be the next three transfer windows under a new billionaire? <laughs> under a new billionaire owner at Manchester United. And what happens at the club for them to become a powerhouse in the market? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the ins and the outs that could occur in the next three transfer windows starting this summer. Right, first up, summer transfer window 2023, the dominoes that fall in the first window may be the most important of them all, okay? Because once you start to put certain players in place, you've got to give them a chance, right? So one thing that people don't know about Man United is that they are right up against it when it comes to the FFP line. It's crucial that they recoup as much money as possible. So the new owners have to do this because under the Glazers, Man United have been shockingly bad at making revenue from player sales. At 25 million, Dan James is Man United's sixth most expensive departure of all time. What? Yes. So to understand the landscape of who might be sold, we first need to take a look at the contract situations at the club because that's going to give us an insight into not only who are the players that are most likely to leave, but also how much moolah, how much cheddar Man United can feasibly get their hands on. So to begin with the players with contracts expiring this year, 2023, as it stands are... David De Gea, way, Tom Heaton, way, Phil Jones. Yeah. These players aren't really relevant to the sales aspects of this section, but it's important to note that they'll be off the wage bill unless they renew. And that, I think that's the big talking point when it comes to David De Gea more so than probably the other two. No disrespect to Tom Heaton or Phil Jones. I actually would be okay with both of you at QPR. More so Tom Heaton, who was here on like. Uh, it's not important. The players with the contracts expiring in 2024, however, are much more important to this video. It's interesting that Anthony Martial, 27, Luke Shaw, 27, Lindelof, 28, and Fred at 30. You've also got Rashford, who's got a new contract being offered at the moment right now. Delo, who's 23, Wambasaka, 25, Brandon Williams, 22, and Garnacho, 18. All of their contracts run out in 2024. And the fact that these contracts expire or are expiring, it makes it very, very interesting because Man United are at a huge crossroads here. They need to make some big decisions of if these guys are part of the future squad or first team or not. What's also so interesting with this is the ages. The ages are always really important when you're thinking about contracts and resale value. And most of these players are over or 27 or over. And this means that if they are given new contracts, their new contracts take them past their primes and therefore they are less sellable assets, especially assets that if we think of what's happening in football right now, lots of seven year contracts to allow yourself to sort of space it out, you're not going to be doing that with these guys who are a little bit older so therefore the cycle repeats itself for Man United on the other hand they still have a lot to offer as part of the squad so it's a big decision to be made this is a catch-22 for Man United because if they do decide to get rid then they have a huge rebuild on their hands when in reality they could be okay with just three or four signings in the summer so which players should Man United sell this summer so the obvious candidates are Aaron Wambasaka, Harry Maguire and Donny van der Beek. Let's start with Aaron Wambasaka because with the contract expiring in 2024 and not being sort of capable of being that technical right back, his place in the squad is under scrutiny. I think that's a fair thing to say. But due to him having a good reputation as a defensive right back, it shouldn't be short of offers for other teams that play different ways. I think the ceiling is beneath Man United and where they want to go. But he would be a really, really good asset. And you could feasibly get him for 15 to 20 million. I think at least 20 million for him. I mean, I guess it's a right back. That's a difficult one here. But I think pushing 20 million for him, even if he's only got one year left on his contract. Next up, you've got Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire is a really interesting one because most clubs will know that Man United want to get rid of him and that may affect his price. But on the other hand, 
he has the tag of being an England international. You know, I think I'm sure he's probably captain England as well, a regular starter and an all right defender in general. And Man United are also in somewhat of a strong position with him being under contract until 2025. So this accompanied by that English tax that you often see means that I think you'd be able to get a minimum, dare I say it, of 35 million for him. And I actually think there'll be a few teams that wouldn't mind having him back. Maybe even, you know, like a Leicester City. He's a solid centre-back who I think has went through a very difficult time and actually isn't as bad as people think. And so I think there's an element of value there to a point. Although, of course, it is still a, a juicy amount of money and you're not going to get your 80 mil back. But I think you've got a good few years out of him despite some of the errors. Donny van der Beek. Now, van der Beek may be a tough sell because of his injuries and due to never having shone in any way at Man United. This may put Premier League clubs off. So I think the saving grace is that Ajax would most likely take him back as they love him over there. Ajax aren't short of cash and could probably shell out about 12 to 15 million for him. So if we go off these, then Man United could probably bring a total of 70 million for those players. And that would open the door for at least one high profile arrival this summer. So who do Man United need to go for in the summer? We've discussed those outgoings. Now it's time for the juicy one. Incomings. That's right. So Sam said in the Ripple Effect this week, he said that he feels that Man United need a striker, a centre midfielder and a probably a goalkeeper, he said. So we're also going to throw in a right back because I think that's a problem for them at the minute. And I don't think I still think they haven't solved that issue. And I don't think they're certain of it. It's not, you know, set in stone with Delo, who I know people like, but I think you can do better. Let's start with the striker, as it's the big topic of debate and a big, big area that Man United need to sort out. Do Man United go for a guaranteed big impact in Harry Kane and make a Robin Van Persie type statement signing? Or do they go for Victor Osman, who would be the striker for the next eight to 10 years? Right. First of all, Harry Kane. Harry Kane has got a transfer market value of 85 million. Kane has also already got to the 20 goal mark this season and has a conversion rate of 21%. He's a proven Premier League goal scorer and that cannot be underestimated. We've seen it time and again, players coming in from different leagues and struggling. With him becoming that top goal scorer for Tottenham, I do think there is reason to believe that he's now completely completed his work at Spurs. He's done all he can do and hasn't really got the repayment, certainly when it comes to trophies. And of course, you could say that he needs to win a trophy at Spurs to complete his time there. But I think he needs to win a trophy to complete his career. And I don't think he can rely on Spurs right now. It's very difficult with the ambition that the club shows and how Daniel Levy goes about running the business uh, in terms at you know at this moment and with man united showing ambition in the last summer window but also on the pitch in their pursuit of trophies it could play a big factor in kane's decision to leave the problem with harry kane for man united is that he's 29 and would be 30 by the start of the next season this means that realistically they're only going to get two three, four, maybe a push of Harry Kane at his best. Now, can he evolve? That's another question for the comments. And But there is an element of risk there when you're searching for that new striker. But I guess in the short term, you don't have that risk because he's so, so good. But let's say he has two years and then starts to fall away a little bit. By that time, you might need to replace other areas of the squad, such as Casemiro, who's going to be 33 in two years' time, 34 in four years' time. So that leads us to Victor Osman, whose transfer market value is 65 million. I know Napoli fans will be screaming at that right now. And I think that's fair enough. Napoli generally are pretty smart when it comes to selling their assets. And Osman is probably the smart signing between the two. Now, I understand that Kane is better in his build-up play and all-round contribution. But if it's a poacher who guarantees you goals that you're after, then I don't think you should look past Osman. I think another thing to talk about is the future of Rashford, because Rashford being able to be that advanced forward at the times and make those runs, are you going to lose that when you have someone like Osserman, who's not as much of a hold-up player as Harry Kane? So that, again, is the problem between these two. The striker is averaging a goal every 97 minutes in Serie A and has such a wide repertoire of finishes in his catalogue that it means that he's able to convert chances that most strikers won't be able to. And I think when we're talking about Man United, I think they should be dominating games better as well. And so that takes away the Rashford element or the reliance on the Rashford element. At 24 years old, he would be the striker that Man United would be able to rely on for years to come. This is something that they haven't done over recent years. And they persistently looked at stopgap options whilst never finding that long-term solution. So the smart money is on Victor Osman.
Central midfield options. For the rest of the options, I think it's important that we remain realistic based on Man United's FFP regulations and go for the cheaper options because I assume it will be the striker position that they're going to have to spend that big money on. So for central midfielders, they're definitely going to be going to need to strengthen where Ericsson plays because he's going to be another year older and Sabitza is only on loan. So here are some options. Ishmael Benasser. His transfer market value is 37.5 million. Benacer would be an unbelievable signing for Man United for a few reasons. Firstly, his profile is very similar to Ericsson's and it would offer a sort of similar level of output in terms of ball progression, but also creativity. Benacer is completing 1.49 successful take-ons per 90 this season, which puts him in the top 8% of midfielders in Europe. His technical ability makes him very press-proof and this would be very suitable for Man United as their number eight. And he's valued at around 40 million, but his contract expires in 2024. So you might be able to get a little bit off that and get it down to 20 to 30 million. Next up, Yuri Tillemans. Transfer market value him at 37.5 million. Tillemans is probably a 50 million pound player due to the quality that he has. And playing as a creative eight, there aren't many better than him in the league. And he is proven to be quality in this league as well. There's a huge opportunity here for Premier League clubs because Tillemans is out of contract in the summer, as we all know. And on a free transfer would be an incredible signing. His profile matches up with Ericsson's in terms of technical ability. And I think this is a real no-brainer for Man United. Of course, the wages are going to be high, but no transfer fee. On to right backs, Jeremy Fringpong, 23 million, uh, was great for me a couple of years back and football manager. And Fringpong is also having an excellent, excellent season for Bayer Leverkusen so far. He's scored seven goals, seven goals from right back and has six assists. Granted, he's playing as a right wing back as opposed to a out and out right back, but he He'd be playing that kind of role for Man United. And he's played as a right back in the past for Celtic and he's excelled there. And with the amount of tacking that he's going to be doing for Man United, I think he'd be a great fit and would offer Man United a directness and a pace on the right-hand side that they are sorely, sorely missing. I think 25 million would be enough if the player wants to move. He's under contract till 2025 though. But generally, I think Leverkusen would want to cash in. Alexander Barr. Now don't get sheepish on this one. 7 million transfer market value. He has a very similar profile to Frimpong uh, in what he offers in terms of athleticism and agility on the right. Bar would probably be the cheaper option as well, obviously. Benfica signed him in the summer for 7 million and he's been quietly having a decent season for them, registering three assists, but actually creating 10 big chances from the right back position. I think Man United could tempt Benfica with an offer somewhere in the region of 15 to 20 million. So another good option in an area that I believe they need to strengthen. Goalkeeper. Again, this one's up for debate. We talk, spoke about this on the ripple effect and Sam was kind of saying that this is something that, that Man United fans are thinking about. So here's a question for you. Do you want to re-sign David De Gea or do you want to go out and try something new, start afresh? Let me know in the comments down below. David Rea would be a good option. I think one that's been mooted. Everyone loves that word, don't they? Mooted uh, in the press. 20 million it would cost. Maybe even more. I think, look, David Ray is the perfect fit for Man United under Ten Hag moving forward. He's exceptional with his feet. He's a great sweeper. He's proven his quality in the Premier League over the last two seasons. He's also out of contract in 2024. So maybe able for a lot cheaper than his value suggests. And he's also getting picked for Spain ahead of De Gea. You've got Meslier at Leeds. His transfer value is 20 million. Meslier is also a good option in terms of being Premier League proven, although I know sometimes people have their doubts, but he's working for a, a very erratic club in terms of their playing style over the last few years. I think the benefits of having uh, Melier, or Meslier, it's Melier, isn't it? Melier over Rea is that he's 23, whereas Rea is 27. So the problem with Melier is that he has a contract up until 2026. However, if Leeds went down, he could be available on the cheap and would be an excellent long-term option for Man United with resale value. Those are the transfer options I think that Man United should pursue this summer, but we're not done there. We continue to move on and give you that little bit of extra value. Looking forward. Next up is the January transfer window for next season. Here we're going to be looking at players that Man United could possibly look to tie up on free contracts when their contracts expire in the following summer. A proactive approach in securing cheap yet valuable deals is an important route for Man United to go down as it makes sense financially, but also for the long-term planning. So, Rafael Leal, maybe. 
if Leal hasn't agreed a new contract with AC Milan by that time, then he could possibly be available on a free next year. This is something we're seeing more and more of, and I think we're going to see more and more of. He'd be 24 at that stage and would again be an incredibly valuable asset in which Man United not only have resale ability on, but also offer something for the club over the long term. Ruben Neves, the Portuguese midfielder, leaving the club is something Wolves can't stop from happening. <laughs> Has to happen at some stage. I think if he's still there by that point, I'll be pretty surprised. However, given his importance to the club, they might just keep him until his contract expires and he would therefore be available on a free transfer. He'd be 27 by that time and would be a great asset to rotate with Casemiro, who will be 32 by the time that Neves would arrive. You've also got another option in Danny Olmoed because I think apart from Bruno Fernandes, who is always fit, but you never know, do you? Man United don't really have a player capable of playing in the number 10 role. Danny Olmo would be the perfect fit for Man United style and is again out of contract in 2024. Olmo would usually be a player that would cost upwards of 40 million. And if Man United can get him either on a cut price in January or arrange to sign him upon the expiration of his contract, that would be incredible business. We promised you three transfer windows. You're bloody getting them. Summer 2024. Now, we're going to have a look at that summer and what challenges that they face, because that's important with this. You can't just kind of do pie in the sky transfers. There has to be an understanding of what the landscape will be at that point. So this is a section where we're going to jump into the future. We're going to have a look at Man United players that will need replacing by that point in time. So a new centre-back may be on the list for Man United in the summer of 2024. By this time, Varane will be 31 and he may have had even more injury setbacks and his career may be beginning to slow down or they can't rely on him to be available for those big games or enough games. So here are two options that may be ready by that time to join Man United. Tangi Nianzu is currently 20 years old and is in his first season with Sevilla after leaving Bayern Munich in pursuit of first team football. So he came through the ranks at Bayern Munich. He's having a steady season, but Sevilla struggles in the league haven't allowed him to shine the to the best of his ability as of yet. But in my opinion, I think with another full season of football, I think he could be a very good centre-back for years to come and could possibly be Varane's successor over the long term. He might also be one where you kind of bring him in and let him continue to grow and work alongside Varane. Another option for Kayo Tomori, the former Chelsea centre-back, has been a revelation during his time in Milan and has a stellar reputation in Italy. But playing abroad seems to be hampering his participation in the England team with Premier players being favoured ahead of him and perhaps a move back to England would suit him next year. He's under contract until 2027. So any move for him this summer is very unlikely, but maybe next summer he'd be available if he wants to leave, I think is the big thing here. He'd be 26 by that point and in his absolute prime, his attributes in terms of physicality and athleticism are also very comparable to Varane. So it might be a good player that you can kind of slot in to replace Varane. Now, I know we've already put candidates in for central midfield already, but in 2024, Ericsson's going to be 32. Fred is going to be 31. So both of them may only may only have bit part roles or might start to become more aligned with being squad players by that point, which means Man United will need another central midfielder by that time. So here's a couple of options. I really like Pakatar as a footballer. I think he showed at the World Cup that he's actually very good as a central midfielder and isn't just a, a sort of... What's the word? Floppy number 10. <laughs> that makes sense. There's little chance of that he leaves West Ham this summer if they avoid relegation. But by 2024, he may have his eyes set on a move away, by which point he may be ready for a move to Man United. His contract is up in 2027, but may have a clause in which it allows him to move to a Champions League team, or he just might want to move away and Man United might have the funds to, to go and get him a couple of years on. Another option, Lazar Samardzic. Yes, Samardzic. This guy is definitely one for the future. He's only 21, but he's having a ludicrously good season in Serie A for Udinese. This season, he has been averaging 6.2 shot creating actions per 90, which is in the top 1% for midfielders across Europe. And he's 21 years old. In my opinion, not many huge clubs will be interested outside of Italy this summer. And he may be at Udinese for one more season, which would be a real acid test for him. Next summer could be the ideal time for Man United to go and get that German star. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favour, hit the like button and subscribe on your way out. Cheers. The weather there on BBC One. Now it seems the north of England aren't the only ones expecting a frosty reception next weekend. Here's 
the day after the match.